Hi there, I'm Marcel B with the City of Eugene Riverhouse Outdoor Center. And today I'd like to tell you about the awesome sport of river snorkeling. River snorkeling can be done on any slow moving river or creek that has clear water with minimal to no hazards. The other great thing about river snorkeling is that it's not very gear intensive and most of the gear that you need you can typically find used at some local shop, purchase new for pretty inexpensive prices, or borrow from a friend who's just not using their setup any longer. So river snorkeling is a great way to get the whole family out on your local waterways. There's a few things you need to know that we're going to go ahead and cover this in this video. So we're going to start by breaking this down into three specific topics. First of all, what equipment you need to go river snorkeling. Second, what's the perfect location to go river snorkeling to minimize the risks of doing the activity. And third, what are the hazards associated with river snorkeling that are different from snorkeling in, say, a lake or the ocean. So here, I'm properly outfitted for river snorkeling. First of all, I have a wetsuit on. Wetsuits are great because they provide forms, they provide a little bit of buoyancy, but most importantly for river snorkeling, they provide some impact resistance because they're made out of a foam material. I also am wearing what's called an inherently buoyant life jacket. An inherently buoyant life jacket is a life jacket that always floats. In other words, it's not an inflatable option. When I'm river snorkeling, especially in an unfamiliar area, I want to wear a life jacket just to up the safety that I have. Some other pieces of equipment that I would need is a mask and a snorkel. These items are pretty simple to find, pretty inexpensive, and chances are you might have an old set laying around in your garage that would work perfectly. For river snorkeling, I most often recommend not getting the brand new thing because in a river environment, things are definitely going to get banged around and scuffed up a little bit. Another piece of equipment that you always want to use when you're river snorkeling is a pair of river booties that are made out of a neoprene material. These provide warmth, but again, more importantly, provide protection against any rocks or anything that you might encounter. Once you get the hang of river snorkeling, it's not a bad idea to invest in a pair of fins as well. This will allow you to move around the river a lot more efficiently, and it will also uh, allow you to maneuver away from ha hazards more easily than without having them. As mentioned earlier, we like to river snorkel because we do it in a place that has a little bit of current. This can often be things like eddies, deeper pools, or slow sections of river that are clear of debris and the water is very clear for visibility. If I'm snorkeling anywhere that has a fair amount of current, in other words current that I can't comfortably swim against very easily, then I also consider wearing a helmet. Uh, a paddle sports helmet is the way to go, but with river snorkeling it's key that you get a helmet that doesn't have a brim that sticks out. Because we're often looking up, if we have a brim, it makes that whole activity much harder. The helmet should be nice and smooth, should not be very buoyant, so something specifically paddle sport, which means that helmets like bicycle helmets are not appropriate for this. But again, just something very, very simple that sheds water, that's okay to beat up, just to up your protection. Just like the helmet and the life jackets, we might not use in every situation. Sometimes we're going to a place that has so little current, is completely uh, free of debris, is nice and clear. We might end up snorkeling with just a wetsuit, booties, fins, mask, and snorkel. As the challenge of a location goes up, you may also consider adding some other pieces of equipment. As most of the people know, divers tend to have a dive knife with them just in case they get tangled in something. With river snorkeling, this is also not a bad idea. 
because you never know when you're gonna run into some fishing line or something that you weren't aware of that could potentially get tangled in. Just a simple folding knife that's really inexpensive and nice and sharp can work well for this sort of idea. Again, this is just a piece of protection if you're going into a spot that has enough current and you're not familiar with. As I mentioned before, it's really not a good idea to use a whole bunch of brand new stuff when you're river snorkeling. And I said you might be able to find some sitting in your garage if you have a garage, or just talk to your friends. It always seems like somebody has a set of masks, fins, and snorkel just kind of laying around that they haven't used in years. River snorkeling is a way to reuse that equipment and get out. So what is the best venue for river snorkeling? Well, this really depends on what your goals are for the day, the skills that you have, the equipment that you have, the experience you have, and also just your general comfort with river snorkeling. The more experience you have and the better judgment you have, the more locations you're going to be able to access. We've already mentioned some things that need to exist in a good river snorkeling venue. Things like clear water, free of debris, and low current are critical to getting out and having a good time. We really need to mitigate a lot of the risks because river snorkeling certainly has many risks associated with it that you can't get around. This spot here is at the top end of the canoe canal in Springfield. And this is the spot I typically take beginners to, like when my daughter wants to go river snorkeling and bring a friend. You can see the water's clear, it's pretty shallow, there's no debris, and it's very low current, as can be seen here. Luckily, here in Eugene and Springfield, we have many locations that you can see on this map. And this circle right now represents the spot I just showed you. Here's some underwater scenes of that spot at the top of the canoe canal. You can actually see that it's absolutely beautiful, but it's a fairly easy spot. You definitely need to be aware of the hazards nevertheless, because there could be garbage or things like that in the water. But generally speaking, this is a pretty good spot to go as a beginner. Just downstream on the Willamette, below the I-5 Rapid, is another great spot. This is located in the tail water of the I-5 Rapid, on the eddy, on the river right side, so river right is when you're looking downstream, and you'll notice there is really calm water. You can actually see through the water. It's pretty clear right now. And it also has no obstacles downstream that you could run into. As a matter of fact, the water gets very calm. The other thing you need to consider is what is the access to that location? And you'll see here there's a trail that goes right down to the water under the pedestrian walkover bridge. So simple access. One of my favorite spots is straight across from the beach at Alton Baker Park. I really like this spot if you have the skills to go there. It's a little bit more advanced in that there is some more current. This is the put in and you can see that it's pretty calm and at this level pretty clear. I also recommend that you check the river gauge before ever going out in the Willamette River in Eugene. We typically do not snorkel at this area until later in the summer when the water is warm, the conditions are also clearer as the summer goes on, and we usually go when the water is below 7,000 cubic feet per second. You see here though that it's got some depth so you can actually dive underwater, but it also has some current that you can work around. Just downstream from the rock outcropping, there's calm water and absolutely no current once you get below the main current around the rocks. So it's easy to recover. You do have to swim all the way across the river though in order to access this spot. So definitely consider the swimming ability before checking out this location. So now that we've identified some venues, let's talk about hazards. So one of the things that's so fun about river snorkeling is that you do it with a little bit of current. It makes you feel like you're flying through the river, like you're a bird cruising over the ground as you travel downstream. This current, however, is the number one hazard 
when we're thinking about river snorkeling because it creates all types of forces that we don't have to deal with when we're snorkeling in, say, a nice calm lake or a protected bay in the ocean. So we really have to consider how this current affects our ability to move around and avoid hazards. Here's an image of several hazards that can exist in a river just due to the current. Here we're at Detroit Lake, swimming around a tree that's submerged in the water. I would never do this in an area that has current. Diving through this tree has its own set of hazards simply because we can get snagged or get caught. So there's definitely things we have to consider, but adding in current to that is an absolute no-no because it just makes too many unknowns. Another hazard in the river with current is foot entrapment where your foot gets caught and you get pushed down into the water. Strainers or trees laying in the water are also hazards because they can catch things like bodies, so we want to avoid them. Sweepers are trees hanging over the water, and we need to know where those are as well. Hydraulics, especially those created by dams, need to be avoided. These can look very simple or very unintimidating, but the media has basically dubbed these drowning machines and so we absolutely need to avoid them. We also need to consider other users in the area we're going snorkeling, like fishermen. We don't want to ruin their experience and we certainly don't want to get tangled in their lines. With river snorkeling, knowledge about the area is the most important thing. So I try to float a section before I snorkel it, walk the banks, do anything I can to find hazards that might be existent within the area even talking to paddlers or locals to get the beta on the spot. The more info you can get, the safer you will be. The last thing I want to mention is that river snorkeling is an activity to be done with other people. You should never go alone. Additionally, your group should always let somebody know where you're going, when you're going to be back, and what action to take if you, they don't hear from you at the prescribed time. Just remember, like any adventure activity, river snorkeling has its risk. So do everything you can to mitigate those risks. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you're looking forward to starting your adventures in river snorkeling. Take it slow, get experience, and make this a fun part of you and your family's life. Enjoy the waterways that we have in our local area, and as always, have a great time and be safe.